First order of business today, we are delivering this 2022 Equinox Premier. Uh, base Premier, so it doesn't have any of the extra packages in it, but it has pretty much uh, everything you want in the vehicle. It's got the leather interior, which is nice. It's got the upgraded uh, you know, trim work and stuff like that. It's got the LED fog lights on the bottom, which is definitely an upgrade. And uh, I just want to make sure that everything is out of the vehicle. You know, we make sure that there's nothing, uh, nothing left in it. Like sometimes the garage door opener for these doors, things like that could be left in the vehicle. So always just do a quick once over to make sure uh, that nothing is left in it. Also to make sure like papers like this that are garbage that we really don't have to keep in the vehicle. Um, I'll take out. I make sure owner's manuals are in it. I already gassed this up yesterday, so I know it's got a full tank. So no worries there. Nothing in the console. I always make sure this button is turned on. Uh, this button is for the door override. So right now, if that button in your Chevrolet vehicle is lit up orange, when you open your doors, your interior dome lights are not gonna come on. If this button is off, they will come on. And then when you close your door, obviously they'll take a second or so and they'll fade back out and uh, they'll be turned off just like that. So I just make sure that's on. Safety features are always on, right? So I leave uh, lane departure warning, lane keep assist, and make sure it's on uh, when they drive out. You wanna make sure the safety features are active. If somebody wants to turn it off, let them turn it off. Uh, the other thing is the buckle to uh, shift, which uh, this vehicle, I guess, is not on from the factory. So let's take a quick look and see if it's a setting. Buckle to shift is where, in a lot of the vehicles now, you have to actually buckle your seatbelt before the car will go into gear, whether it be like reverse or drive. Um, it's on in a lot of vehicles from the factory. I make sure I leave it on. You know, again, if a customer wants to turn it off, let them turn it off. Don't you turn it off as a salesperson, and then, you know, three days later, your customer doesn't buckle their seatbelt for whatever reason, they go into gear to get into an accident, and then, you know, there, there's a problem there. So, again, I make sure all the safety stuff is turned on. I guess this doesn't have buckle to shift. The system, let's see. No, I guess it doesn't. Anyways, let's get this backed up and uh, pulled up front, ready to go. Customers will be here around 10.30 to sign all their paperwork and take delivery. Uh, this was the only Equinox we had in stock and uh, thankfully it was here. Thankfully it was one that they liked and uh, they decided to purchase it. I want to give a quick shout out to the Jean Luis family who picked up their 2023 C8 Corvette convertible the other day. Look at this C8 and tell me it's not like the most beautiful one you've ever seen. So, you know, red mist metallic. It's got the nice uh, machine faced painted aluminum wheels, like the brightest wheel option you can get on the car, which I think looks fantastic against the red mist. They also upgraded to the edge red calipers, which matches the red mist like perfectly. On the inside of this car, which obviously you can't see in this photo, uh, they did have like the, the red and black combination interior but it was like the trimmed red so it wasn't the whole seat that was red it was just like the bolsters of the seat and it had some accent marks on the dashboard and stuff like that uh in red but just really a nice setup car uh really nice family i uh, spent some time talking to their sons and stuff like that it was just it, it was a really great experience that i think they had in uh purchasing their c8 it actually started as a 22 order like many they didn't get built because of all the issues going on so it got flipped to a 23. i really hope they're enjoying their car i hope it was worth the wait and uh you know now's the time to just have fun the wait is over now it's time to get in that car drive and just enjoy it My clients on the Equinox uh, signed all their papers. They did take delivery and they are on the road. Victor and Victor, if you are watching, thank you very much. I appreciate the business. Uh, the vehicle was actually for uh, Victor, the son, the younger gentleman, and uh, he is very, very excited. So that's awesome to see. Right now we got a little project we're working on on this Silverado, but I tell you what, before we do that, let me go through the inventory. Cause as you can see the lot, again, 
is very, very empty. Today is June 25th, 2022. We are officially one year, a uh, little over a year into the chip shortage to where we have, uh, you know, just reduced inventories and all the craziness of what's been going on. Now, what do I have in stock? I have a black trailblazer that was parked here. Somebody I think is looking at it at the moment. That's a front wheel drive RS that's available. We have this 2LT uh, white blazer. We have a 3LT Traverse available. This here is an RST Silverado 2022 limited style. We have the Trail Boss Custom here. This one is still available. The Duramax diesel I made the video about yesterday, this is actually sold. So that'll be out of here soon. This is a duplicate of the other Custom uh, Trail Boss. This is actually sold. So that should be gone soon. We got a Colorado, this is available. Um, I'm actually surprised it's still here. We've had a number of customers come in on that vehicle so far, but no one's pulled the trigger on it. You'll see there's a Malibu and a Tahoe out there, but those are, the Malibu is a courtesy car uh, for a company. The Tahoe is sold and delivered. The customer's gonna come later on to actually physically take delivery. And then the last one we have here is this refreshed Silverado LT, uh, which is what we're going to, uh, talk about for the next couple minutes. And I'm sorry, we do have one more Redline Silverado parked up in front of the dealership. So what is that? That's currently um, seven seven vehicles, uh, new vehicles in stock and, uh, and available. Uh, this is the power outlet, 120 volt, uh, maximum of 400 watts. That's an option in the Silverado. So I just wanna show you, right now the truck is off, it's sitting here, and when I plug my phone in, uh, it's gonna be hard to tell probably on camera, but it is not charging. Uh, it is not charging at the moment. So what we have to do is we have to start the truck up. But before we start it up, we're just gonna put it in accessory mode and see if it uh, if it works you know, in accessory mode. So to do accessory mode, we gotta have the key in the vehicle. We are not gonna put our foot in the brake. We're just gonna press the button. And there you go, we are in accessory mode. Gonna go back to the phone here to see if it's charging. Uh, it is not charging. So the, the truck has to be running to use this outlet, apparently. Uh, it came up earlier because a customer of mine uh, that bought the first red refreshed uh, Silverado that we had, he realized in his truck that there's no button for the outlet anymore. There used to be what was called a DC-AC button where you could turn that outlet on or off. Now, I don't have a truck here to test with that button to see if you can activate that while the truck is not running. Um, and I don't recall if you could do that, but there is no button. There used to be a little button on this panel. It had a little plug in it. That's how you would activate it. You'd press it, it would turn green, and that's how you knew the outlets were power, uh, both the one in the front uh, and the one in the bed. Now that the truck's running, let's go back and see if we're charging which I already know the answer, we will be. Uh, we are, you can see there's a little lightning bolt in there and we are, uh, we are charging. Now, the problem I have with this, which I just never thought of and never realized, if you're tailgating and you're hanging out, you know, barbecuing, whatever at a game or wherever you are, you can't use the outlet unless the truck is running. So if you wanted to plug in like a radio or something like that, to me, it's kind of counterproductive that you can't use that outlet with the vehicle running without the vehicle running. Now, I get it, you don't wanna drain the battery, so you'd have to monitor how you're using it, but if you're just using it for something basic, I can't imagine it's gonna, it's gonna drain the battery that fast. Um, now, Dan recommended I check out, cause he remembered seeing a video where you can actually modify uh, the fuse where it goes, and if you switch the position of the fuse, they do have one where you can do it where the key is on, or you can do it where the key is not in the vehicle and it'll run that outlet. So I went over to the passenger side here to the fuse panel, which is uh, right here. We're just gonna pull this little tab here and pop this panel off. Um, on here, you can see all the different, uh, all the different fuses and everything like that. Now I mirrored what was in that video. And if I get my puller here, um, this 50 amp is the amp uh, fuse for that power outlet system. So in the video, basically you can just take that out and move it to the next spot over. And when you do that, it is either running with the key on or with the key off. Now the problem is when we pull this fuse out, we're gonna notice, whoops. You're gonna notice with the fuse out that there is only two studs. There's not a third stud there. Now in the video that I had watched earlier, there was actually a third stud that he was able to move that on. So I don't know if you can do that in this particular truck. Uh, with the fuse out, you'll notice we are currently not charging, you know, obviously, because there's no power to that, to that function. I'm gonna turn the truck off and put this fuse back in. Uh, let's go around and start it back up. 
come back around to the phone and we should be charging again. My phone is actually giving me a heat warning, which makes sense because it's like 90 degrees outside today and I just left it sitting in the baking sun. Uh, so I'm gonna button all this up back together. Moral of the story, um, I, I don't like the fact that maybe I'm wrong in doing this. Maybe somebody in the comments, if they know how to either swap this out as far as the fuse or if I'm doing something wrong, but it just seems, again, like you'd wanna use that outlet when you're tailgating, but you wouldn't wanna sit back there using the outlet tailgating with constant emissions coming out, just running, running the vehicle at idle. It doesn't really quite make sense. Um, again, maybe some of the comments can tell me what I'm doing wrong if I'm doing it wrong.